Are you looking to learn how to get hired in a down economy or make sure you don't get laid off in a recession? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs and I'm the founder and CEO of GoCloud Careers. And we're an organization that's really dedicated towards helping people build the high performance cloud computing careers of their dreams. Personally, I've been working in technology for over 25 years and I've been helping others get their first tech job or get promoted in tech for over two decades. And I wanna help you get cloud hired, cloud promoted, and if the economy's down and it looks like we're headed towards a down economy, I wanna help you save your job. So in this video, I'm gonna give you seven career tips to make sure that in a down economy, your chances of keeping your job or getting hired are the highest they possibly could be. Now I'm gonna save some of the critical ones for the end, so make sure you wait till the end and watch this full video. The first tip that I'm gonna give you is to learn in-demand skills. Now right now I'm gonna tell you why my first and most four favorite careers are as following, and why I think these are the right skills for you to learn in a down economy. We're going to be talking about the cloud architect, the cloud engineer, automation engineering, and security. I'm going to first begin with the cloud architect, which I believe is the best position moving forward in a down economy. The reason I'm going to start with the cloud architect is it is something called a revenue generating position. Most architects, cloud architects, work in a pre-sales environment. So when the cloud architect goes and meets with a customer and sells a deal of a design, they're bringing business into their companies. And who doesn't get laid off? the people that generate money. So the cloud architect is a critical position for several reasons. The cloud architects helps with digital transformation or they help businesses become more efficient with technology. That means more profitable. So in a down economy, when businesses are struggling for profit, they look towards cloud architects to improve their business performance. And cloud architects can help take things from the network and the data center to the cloud, which can often do things better, faster, and cheaper. So a cloud architect in a down economy is gonna move most likely a critically in-demand position. There is an enormous amount of open cloud architect positions. There's a huge migration towards the cloud. And we see the cloud architect is probably the best position in a down economy. Now the next position we like, which is actually cloud engineering. And in many cases, we don't like certain engineering positions in a bad economy, but we'll talk about them later. But we still like the cloud engineering position even in a down economy, and here's the reason why. Businesses have just begun migrating their workloads to the cloud, and there's so much more work to be done. And while the cloud architects design that system and bring the business into the cloud provider or the consulting company, the systems need to be built, and they're built by the cloud engineer. And because the cloud engineer is building systems that often operate better, faster, and cheaper than their data center counterparts, the cloud engineer is part of the solution, part of the profitability solution, so we see still continued growth in the cloud engineering space, even in a down economy. Going along with a down economy, what are businesses trying to do? Businesses are trying to remain profitable. And businesses are going to get rid of the positions that don't generate as much money or things that cost them a lot. And businesses in these times look for automation. And therefore, automation engineering or DevOps careers we see as good and strong in a challenging economy for the following reasons. DevOps engineers enable companies to do more with less. And therefore, they're money-saving positions. And because of that, we see some growth in this field as well, even in a down economy. Now, the last systems we're gonna talk about are security people, security architects, security engineers. Here's the thing. As more of our systems go online, and as we try and save costs, we may be more online and more to the cloud. The more things we put on our systems, the more vulnerable businesses are, the more critical security professionals are. So our favorite careers moving forward in a down economy are the cloud architect because it's revenue generating, the cloud engineer because it's revenue saving, the automation engineering because it's cost saving, and security because it's absolutely, absolutely critical. Now, you've heard about our favorite jobs. What jobs do we think are ripe for being laid off or outsourcing? Now, we have to think about this. In a challenging economy or environment, businesses still need to financially survive. And there's work that still needs to be done. But there's certain kinds of work that it doesn't matter where you're located. Architecture is a career where you, generally speaking, have to meet the client. So there's a proximity thing, at least to some degree. But certain fields, it doesn't matter where you are anywhere in the world where you can do it. 
things like software engineering. You can code anywhere. It doesn't make a difference if you're coding in your basement in my, in my village in Greece, coding in a basement in South America, or coding in a basement on Wall Street. It doesn't matter. So the certain fields like software engineering are easily outsourceable and therefore are high risk in negative economies because we can outsource it to a lower cost country where we can get the work done much cheaper. So in a down economy, companies look to outsource easily outsourceable positions and software engineering is one of them. Here's another position that we don't like in a down economy, any kind of admin work like sysadmin work or cloud admin work. And here's the reason why. It doesn't matter anywhere in the world where you do these things as long as you have IP connectivity. So because of that, cloud admin work, sysadmin work, that stuff is ripe for outsourcing. So if you're in one of these roles and you're sensing the economy is not so great, it might make sense to go from cloud admin to cloud engineering, upgrade your skill set, have a more valuable skill set, one that is harder to outsource. Because in a down economy, the first jobs to go are the things that you can outsource, like admin work or software engineering. What's worse, these positions cost the company money. They don't generate money for the company. So even though they're critical positions, in down economic times, these are the types of positions that, that typically get outsourced first or laid off first. So keep that in the back of your mind. If you're trying to stay strong in a down economy, you may want to upgrade your skill sets to get out of one of these positions. Next. How do you optimize your career and try and make yourself layoff resistant or much more likely to be hired? Well, upgrade your attitude. Be the most likable, pleasant person out there. Be the person that's known as such a pleasure to be with and work with. And here's the reason why. Employers hire people that they like and employers lay off people often that they don't like. So don't give your manager any excuse. Be lovable, be likable. Be your manager's favorite person. Be your team's favorite person. And most likely, you won't get caught up in a layoff. And when it comes to hiring in a challenging environment or a good environment, often the likability factor plays a key player. So upgrade your attitude. Thinking about it, how you treat others is critical. How do you make other people feel in your presence? You want to be known as someone that's fair to everybody, that treats everyone decent, that's got honesty and integrity, but you make other people feel good in the presence. Look, nobody likes a negative person, no one likes an arrogant person, and no one likes a nasty person. And many organizations can people consider people that are challenging to work with as toxic. And a toxic person can kill and damage the morale of the team. And the reality is in a good environment, many managers will just dump toxic people there. But some managers keep toxic people around and they wait for layoffs. And they use the layoff as a chance to get rid of the toxic people and they hold the toxic people around so that during the layoff, they get rid of the toxic people and not the good people. So layoffs present an opportunity to get rid of unwanted people and pleasant people. So be loved, not disliked. It'll go so far in your career, especially during challenging times. Next, increase your career agility skills. Career agility skills. These are the skills that work in every career. And why am I so concerned about your career agility skills? If you work for a good company and have to eliminate a department or eliminate a position, if the company likes you and you've got these agility skills, they can move you to different jobs. And therefore, if a position is eliminated, you could get some other job, often a better job. I've been through layoffs and I've gotten many promotions during the layoff because of my agility skills. So what are your career agility skills? Oh, by the way, they're also the same skills that get you paid the most and promote career progression. So here's what they are. Leadership skills, emotional intelligence skills, sales skills, presentation skills, communication skills, social skills, empathy, and executive presence. Now, these skills are amazing. So think about why the company might want them. In a down environment, people are getting upset. People, when they're upset, don't work as well. So people that have good leadership skills can help bring out the best in others and get people back to work helpful, lead people out of the toxic negativity that goes along with it. How about emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence, by the way, is your best predictor of career success. And it's your ability to manage your emotions and other people's emotions. So now when people are upset and you can walk in there, you can make people happy. You can show your manager you're a team player. It's great. How about sales? Well, when it comes down to it in an economy, who do you lay off? The people that bring money into the company? No, you don't lay them off for the people that cost the company money. Well, they're the first to get laid off. Increase your sales skills. 
because if it comes down to it, you could be migrated towards a sales position where not only can you generally earn more, but you're less likely to get a laid off. Now we enter the world of communication skills and presentation skills. Let's talk about this. These are the skills that can bring money into the company. It goes along with sales. These are the skills that you can do to show the company that you're special, that you're better than the rest. See, you can have it all in your head, but if you can't present or to communicate it, nobody knows how smart you are. So by having these skills and developing these skills, the world will know, your manager will know, your team will know how good you are because you'll be able to communicate it. Now, I hate saying it, who gets laid off? Social outcasts. So improve your social skills. Get used to reading people. Learn what to say, what's appropriate, what's not to say appropriate. And I promise you, it can improve your career and it will make you much less likely to get laid off. Next is your empathy, how you treat others. When someone's walking down the hallway and says, I got laid off, don't say, thank God it's not me. Don't do that. Don't say, I'm so sorry this happened to you. What can I do to help you in your life? That kind of thing. After a layoff, everybody's going to be sad because they lost friends. Be empathetic, but bring out the best in others and you're there. And lastly, your executive presence. And why am I talking about executive presence and not getting laid off? Here's the thing. When you have presence, People see you as powerful and strong. If you're going to cut your staff, you don't cut your strong. You cut your weak. So by creating and having more executive presence, you look and feel stronger. You're much more likely to be kept. Now let's talk about dressing better. I know. If it was me, I'd wear a t-shirt and shorts and flip-flops because that's what I like, but I don't do that at work for the following reason. Let's face it. People judge a book by its cover. Dress for the job you want. When you dress better, management will take you more seriously. But we have to look at the data. The data is clear on appearance and verbal communication. The data from Harvard University shows that when we interact with each other, 55% of the communication is what we look like when we say something. 38% is what we sound like when we say something. And 7% is actually the content. So look better, dress better. The world will take you more seriously and it will improve your appearance, your communication, and everything. Nobody likes meetings, right? I'm here to tell you that meetings are one of your career's best friends. And what you do in meetings can get you promoted or laid off. Why are meetings such an incredible opportunity? Management present often several levels. So in a meeting, when everybody's playing on their phones, complaining and commiserating, you can show you're better than the rest. So when everybody's playing with their phones, pay attention. When everybody's not focused on anything, contribute. Be there, be in the moment, be focused. Now, guess what? The manager's gonna discuss projects. What do I want you to do? Volunteer for more projects. That's right, you heard me take on more work. Who gets laid off? The person that's doing the most work for the company or the person that's doing the least? Be known as the one that's doing the most stuff. But don't just volunteer for any projects. Volunteer for the toughest, hardest, and most critical projects. The kind of projects that are so critical to the business that the business can't survive without them. That way, if the business cuts staff, you're on the stuff that's so critical the business can't afford to lay you off. So that's our advice. Volunteer for critical projects, the toughest hard ones, and put all your ener energy, all your effort, all your power, all your love into it, and be great. And the last tip that I'm gonna give you is share your expertise. Wait, share my unique expertise in a down economy? Yes, it sounds counterintuitive, but share your expertise. You may think having some expertise in a single area makes you immune to a layoff, but it doesn't. But if you have expertise, you can go a long way to save your job. Ask your manager if you've got a specific expertise, if he would like you to, or she would like you to share that expertise to the team. And here's why. You're showing your manager you are a leader. You're showing your manager you're a team player and you're showing your manager that you are the solution to his team or her or her team being healthy after the layoff. And after a layoff, management is gonna need a, need a team of people that can cross train and raise morale. And if you can do that, you become a critical part of the, of the post layoff recovery team and you're not part of the layoff group. So by doing this, being part of the solution, helping to train and educate others, mentor others, the company sees you as so much more value. Now you know the things that you can do in a down economy to increase your career. I'll repeat them again just to summarize. First thing, focus on in-demand skills. Two, 
Try to get out of jobs that are easily outsourceable. Three, upgrade your attitude. Four, increase your career agility skills. Five, dress better. Six, contribute to meetings and meetings are your best friend. And seven, and lastly, share your expertise. It'll make you part of the solution. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I wanna help you all get cloud hired, cloud promoted, or keep your career in a down economy. We're gonna be producing more videos and more content about what's going on in the down economy and how to maximize your career in a down economy. And I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon. Take care, everyone. It was so nice having you join us for this video today. Let me tell you about some free services we do for the cloud community. We have a free how to get your first cloud architect job webinar where we tell you all the things you need to do and know to get your first cloud architect job. In addition to that, we actually have a free question and answer session on live on YouTube, where you can come and ask us any questions you want about building your career related to cloud computing or networking, and we'll answer them in real time for you because we want to get you to your goals. Several more times per week, we have guests from industry, industry experts that I have known for decades that are movers and shakers that have changed the world that can give you information so you can build the best career. I invite them periodically. They are on my show. If there's a chance to do some free training on our channel, we'll do it live because we want you to all to have the best skills for the best career. So please subscribe and hit the bell. I look forward to seeing you and I look forward to assisting you in your technology career. Thank you so much. This is Michael Gibbs from Go Cloud Architects.